A walk whose initial and terminal vertices are the same is a closed walk. These correspond to the diagonal entries of the powers of the adjacency matrix. And this suggests we can use the adjacency matrix to find cycles. So let's not think about it and rush right in. A graph G has adjacency matrix A with A to the 7th equal this thing. How many length 7 cycles does G have? The diagonal entries correspond to the number of closed length 7 walks. So we'll add them up and find we have 34 length 7 cycles. Or are there? The thing to keep in mind is that while the entries of A7 show the number of length 7 walks, remember a walk might revisit a vertex and might reuse an edge. But cycles can do neither. Note that A to the 7 is a 5 5 5 matrix, which means that our graph G has 5 vertices. But the longest possible cycle in such a graph has length 5. And so there are no 7 cycles in G. In general, the diagonal entry of A to the K won't tell us the number of cycles. There's one exception for simple graphs. Consider a length 3 walk from a vertex to itself in a simple graph. We're going to go from vertex 1 to V2 to V3 back to V1. Since the graph is simple, no edge connects a vertex to itself. So V1 is not V2, V2 is not V3, and V3 is not V1, so the vertices are distinct. But since the vertices are distinct, the edges are also distinct. Consequently, let G be a simple graph. Every closed length 3 walk is a length 3 cycle. And so that means if we have a graph that looks like this, we can find the number of length 3 cycles through the adjacency matrix. So we find the adjacency matrix. Vertex 1 is connected to vertices 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Which gives us the first row of our adjacency matrix. Vertex 2 is connected to vertices 1, 3, 4, 5, and 6, which gives us the second row of the adjacency matrix. And we can find the remaining rows of the adjacency matrix. So we want to find the length 3 cycles, so let's find the length 3 closed walks. So we want to find the third power of the adjacency matrix, which will be And adding the diagonal entries give us the number of three cycles. Or does it? So remember, concrete never hurts. Let's consider those length three walks again. Since A11 equals 24, there are 24 closed length three walks in our graph that begin and end at vertex 1. For example, 1 to 2 to 3, back to 1. Since A22 is 14, that tells us there are 14 closed length 3 walks in our graph that begin and end at vertex 2. For example, 2 to 3 to 1 to 2. But we've already counted this one in our 24 closed length 3 walks that begin and end at vertex 1. And in particular, while they are different walks, they're the same cycle. And this means that every cycle will be counted once for each vertex on it. Consequently, every 3 cycle gives 3 closed 3 walks, giving us 3 times the number of cycles is the number of closed 3 walks. We know the number of 3 walks, and so there are 32 cycles. Or are there? Since a walk is a sequence, order matters. 
the walk 1 to 2 to 3 is different from the walk 3 to 2 to 1. A cycle is a walk, so order should matter, and the cycle 1 to through to 3 back to 1 should be considered different from the cycle 1 to 3 to 2 to 1, which goes through the same points but in the reverse order. However, these are generally considered the same cycle. Consequently, every three cycle can start from any of its three vertices and can go in one of two directions. So six times the number of three cycles is the number of closed walks. So the number of three cycles is the number of closed walks divided by six. Or we could express that as the sum of the diagonal entries of a cubed divided by six. And so our graph would have 16 3 cycles. Since n cycles and closed n walks are different, we can't use the diagonal entries of a to the n to find the number of n cycles, at least not without some further analysis. But as the proceeding shows, this analysis is possible. So let's consider the general case. Oh my, look at the time, gotta go.